Wow, a little. We got this pig out this morning to do a little photo shoot. I realized from my last video, I didn't have a good picture of the pig, so I got one this morning so we can put that thumbnail on yesterday's video. And this is so fun. This, this guy is just wandering around, real chill. We He's gave him so a little tall. food in the grass. He is so chill. We, just, we have four in there, and friends are about to come pick up two. But this little guy, he's just so calm. Oh, I can go to the table. Quick little pet. Are you happy to have pigs out here again? Yeah. Oh, I touched it. I mean, don't get too friendly. These are feeder pigs. <laughs> but they, I. I mean, my one day experience with this breed is that I really like them. <laughs> in, in one day, I've decided that. <laughs> I decided I liked these pigs the moment I met them, or actually even before. I've, I've wanted to raise this breed for a long, long time, so we're super happy we have them. All right, let's get them in the barn. Open it. Watch out, Brighton. We're going to get them in there now. <laughs> Dude, wrong way. I'm going to go ahead and feed these pigs, and we're feeding them a pretty exact amount, but um, this is a really helpful tool if you've never had one. It's just a scoop that shows you an approximate weight measurement by volume. And so we're giving them four pounds, which is half their ration, and then we'll give our two this evening two pounds. Pick, 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 pick. You two are missing out if you don't go in there. They're going to eat all the food. There you go. You'll find it. How do you want to get them in that the crate? Do you want to <laughs> do you want to put them in there and carry the whole crate? You could probably actually back all the way down there. That's probably the best thing. Oh, okay, yeah, back down there. I mean, I don't I, I you know, I'm kind of looking to you. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's what I'm asking. <laughs> I would suggest you back down and then we'll put the crate down get the pigs in it and then lift the crate up. All right. We'll get a little feed to lure them along. I think that's good because we're actually gonna pick them up. Can you guys jump off the gates, please? Hey, Justice, put the goat in that stall so she doesn't get out. We're just gonna let them all run out of here. Whoa. I'm gonna let them pick themselves. Those floppy ears. All right, I think those are your pigs. Pigs will bite you. Space off and just. Bam! 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 Give them a chance to go the gentle way and then just kind of shove them in there. For all that noise though, they seem pretty happy. Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! <laughs> And this is how you move farm animals when you don't really have a truck or a farm truck. Like us, our friends have a farm van. We have a farm van. You don't need all the big fanciest things to have farm animals. Interestingly, in our video yesterday, and yesterday, um, we got, for some reason, my goat's udders were just practically empty of milk. It's a drastic drop. And the day before, their udders had been extra full. So I was thinking maybe they were weaning, and I just hadn't noticed. But then today, the very next day, their milk's right back up where it has been. So I don't know, it is a mystery to me. It's almost like the baby's nurse and then got back in the, the stall. I don't know. Yeah, in a second. Yeah, go ahead. I'll scrub you. This is our breakfast hash variation. The, probably the simplest one. It's just sausage and kale. Come to eat, guys. Help. 
two hands. I just got back from checking on Alice again. As you know, we were anxiously waiting for her to calf, and um, she is about seven, eight days overdue at this point. I think she is in early labor. I could be totally wrong because I don't know this cow's, I don't know how she acts. The thing that is making me think it could be today or tonight is that she is not eating. And some cows will eat the whole time they're birthing, like they'll be chomping on some grass and the baby calf halfway out of them. But some cows don't. So speaking of mamas, I just wanna say, speaking of mamas in labor, mamas tough as nails, sweet as honey. This is my favorite one that Arthur has gotten me so far. And these are still for sale. The link to these is directly below this video. And I love this one. This is the 100% cotton one. And I just really, I like this one a lot. Is it the premium or the, okay. So it's the premium and it is very soft. I buy the unisex because I just like the loose fit of a, of a unisex t-shirt for getting work done. Anyways, I just think it's a good time to mention this shirt because that is never truer than when a mama is having a baby. <laughs> Do you like sausage and greens? Try to Yum. eat it. Let's see. Oh, no, you got a stem. Just throw it down if you don't want it. There's a little stem in there. Do it all the way up, right there. The room is totally empty. She hasn't eaten all day. And now she's out here, she's eating like crazy. Who knows? We're pinning Alice, her cow, right here between the barns in a real small area just to watch her closely for a little while. Watching her across the pasture, it looked like she was acting differently, possibly going into labor. She's due now, or days ago really, from our calculations, or observations rather. Now she's eating, now that she's on fresh stuff, but. We'll see. We're gonna just watch her closely for a couple hours. And I don't want you. I don't want you guys to think you have to be so finicky with your cows. It's just that we would really like to see it for one and for two. I didn't like that spot where she was because there was a lot of mud and it was attracting a lot of flies. So I already knew that when she calved, I wanted to, or when we thought she was gonna calve, I wanted to move her and not give her access to that muddy, fly-filled area. Um, so you know, if she doesn't calve today, we'll move her from here and just put her on new grass away from the mud. But we just thought it'd be fun to put her right here. We do want to be aware though if she's in labor just because if there were an issue, we would want to be on hand to help her. And it might take a little bit of time to get someone else out if we need to do something that we're not comfortable doing. It might take a long time. So we don't want to be, you know, way behind, have a calf stuck for hours and then we call someone. We want to see, hey, this is not progressing and then we can get on the phone and like talk it over. <laughs> Don't you guys think Alice has just come such a long way? Look at how much she just lets me love on her. She hasn't run from me. You are such a good girl. While we wait on the cow to, I don't know, do whatever she's gonna do today, I'm gonna go weedy the section of pasture she was on and reset it for our next rotation 30 days from now. We're going to try our homemade fermented pickles. If you want to see the video of how we made them, I'll put a little link to that video. Above this one is the short version. These have been, <laughs> there's mold, mold on top. <laughs> we'll pull the mold off the top. I'm leaving. You... <laughs> That's just gross. There was a little bit of mold on top. I threw that off. Generally with fermented foods, you can throw mold off the top. You may not be comfortable doing that. You may not be comfortable doing that. I'm not, but it is historical that that's what people did. Uh, Grace is not comfortable doing that. She just left. I am. I'm not doing that. Hear the crunch? You won't regret it, I promise. Mm, won't I when I get sick later? You won't get sick. It's so good. It? I'm sure you won't regret it. Why are they so cold? I put them in the fridge. What? Those are actually delicious. 
and different from any pick I've had, which that would make sense because they're made in a totally different way than normal pickles you'd get at the grocery store or pickles you would can. So I'm gonna actually put them all in the fridge because I don't want them to progress to mushy and they're just about perfect as is. You should check out that video I linked because making these is really, really simple and I'd very much recommend it. As to whether I'd recommend pulling mold off the top and eating the pickles, I don't know, that's up to you. You gotta read about it. I think it's generally okay, but I'm not gonna tell you you should do it. So, that's that. This is the book that we are currently reading to learn more about fermenting. It's mostly a recipe book, but there's a lot of information about fermenting. Most of it Arthur already knows, but I didn't. And so, I'm really excited about this book. I'll link this book below. I highly recommend it. It's absolutely critical that you give your pigs shade because despite the saying sweating like a pig, pigs don't really sweat and they can't regulate their temperatures very well in the heat. They, they do great in the cold, but in this first area where we're putting our pigs outside, we're making sure they have shade. We've got this new Premier One charger here. This is the Premier One Solar IntelliShock 60. We've been needing a new solar charger for a while. We could connect this fence into our current um, fence system, but that would limit where we could put it pretty significantly. And we really want to move the pigs out into the woods and um, into the woods up the mountain and then into the woods up here above the garden or beside the garden. This is the first time I've ever used a pig fence from Premier One. And I'm pretty excited about it. It's basically a short version of their other fences. Once we've got our two ends matched up, I'm actually going to take that and open it up and make kind of a funnel to hopefully get those pigs to go into until we get them in the fence. All right, we got some food. Oh. What did you say? The pigs didn't open. You want to open it up? All right, we got them in, and they're not coming out of there for anything <laughs> while they're eating that food. They're not gonna get you. Just fighting a little bit. I'm gonna tie these two sections together. When you open it up, inside is a battery, of course, but there's this unique grounding rod, which I really like. Maybe here. The best by maybe. Oh, more rocks. Harder. No, you push it. Okay, I'll push it. The cow saw this open barn door and wanted to come right in, so I'm gonna close that up. I don't want her in there. She just wants to lay in the cool shade. She's still pregnant. I see what you're doing. And these concrete block to put that water on. Come on, let's go. Get back out of here. Hey. Got two pigs out here in their setup. It's a pretty simple setup. This is really all you need to rotate pigs. It's not a cheap setup, but most of the components of this will last for many years. The charger typically is gonna have the shortest life, but the rest of it will, will get us years of pig rotation. These fences, we've had some of them for, I'm trying to remember, I think six years maybe? You mind talking for a second about the chaos that's happening right now? Uh, we're just deep cleaning the camper and making the outside of it more user friendly because it's just always a giant, nasty, annoying mess. And as mamas know, that drives us insane. So actually my friend Katie is tackling that because she is the queen of organization and I'm tackling the deep clean of the camper. I feel like I say I'm cleaning a lot, but honestly, I know people think like cleaning camper is a smaller space, but it gets so Dad, will filthy. You put this in my it takes about 30 minutes to get messy. Yeah. Well, it takes 30 minutes to get messy, but the filthiness, it's just filthy. And, um, 
It's really hard to actually keep it like sanitary. And I'm taking, how many kids am I taking? Nine? Nine kids on a hike in the woods Nine. while the ladies work and clean down here. I'm not sure how far we'll make it I got with it. all these kids. You know what? I don't think really I'm filming in the woods. Yeah, do you know where a really good spot is though? You wouldn't even have to go far. Where? It's just up to where that road goes over that creek right there. Yesterday was a false alarm. We put the cow between these two barns and she never had her calf and we actually pretty quickly realized she wasn't going to just by looking at her. We yeah. realized she wasn't in labor. We looked at her ligaments again. That's the number one sign. I Yeah, I felt her ligaments and realized these ligaments aren't gone. Oh my gosh, I love seeing the pigs outside. Let's go see the pigs. It's nice out here now that it's cool. I just want to test your fence and make sure it's up to snuff. Yeah, that'll do. Let's go. Is it, is it out of form? Yeah, they're finding stuff to eat. Yeah, you can turn it off for me. <laughs> How did it even get turned on? <laughs> it was in my pocket. Hey, Mama. Some fly spray on her. But my sprayer isn't working. This is pouring it on her, which she actually prefers. She doesn't like the sound of the nozzle. This may seem like deja vu. Why are we putting the cow between the barns again? It's because when you see it, you know, and she's about to calf. We're watching her ligaments. So her ligaments on both sides are basically almost gone. There's a tiny bit left on this side. <laughs> And when their ligaments are totally gone, they'll calf within 12 to 24 hours. Now hers aren't totally gone, but that means she's gonna calf really soon. So we're just gonna keep her in this area to keep her close so we can keep an eye on her. It may not be tomorrow, it may be the next day, but it's gonna be very soon. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if I woke up in the morning to a calf or if Arthur did, since he's gonna be first up. If you've watched our last few videos, it might seem to you like we're saying the same thing over and over again. But here's the difference. Every other time we said, uh, I don't know, her ligaments are sunk, but when you we don't think they're totally sunk. And it's really one of those things when you see it, you know. And this is, it's happening now, basically. It's, she's gonna have a calf. And so um, we expect it within 24 hours. Yeah, you can see the big, big hollow, there. hollow dip here. Yeah, that is a big difference. And the other side's even more pronounced. Yep, you excited? Yeah. yeah. I'm nervous and excited, but I'm glad. Back up. I don't want you near her legs, okay? It's finally happening. That is finally happening. I forgot that when you know, you know. And when you know, you know. So I didn't, I just forgot that with Dolly, like I really did know that those ligaments were gone. Mama. What are you doing in climbing in there? It's not bath time. We're about to bring the goats in from the back pasture and the feed the chickens to the evening chores but we're pretty much done for the day. Guys, it's been another great day in the homestead and we will see you soon. And hopefully, I really think we'll have a calf in one of the next two videos you watch. Probably the next video you watch. So we're excited. I think it'll be really fun. I'm excited. I just want you to be home for it. So kind of hope it's not tomorrow. <laughs> we'll see. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.